the unit that you see right here, we call this a gas processor. And basically what we're doing is we're ionizing the ambient air gases that are now going into the process. And this allows us to trigger and use the hydrogen fracturing technology and tapping into a higher energy yield coming from the hydrogen. The units you see right here, this is referred to. Go ahead. We've now taken the liberated gases. We are now starting to expose it to a high voltage field. And we are now starting to bring the combustible gas atoms into a destabilized state. Now in our technology, when you burn hydrogen oxygen by itself, it's releasing that energy around two and a half times that of gasoline. But there's a tremendous amount of energy in water, and the key was how do you tap into it? Since uh, the hourglass effect in nu nuclear power plants showed us that if we don't reverse and stop using nuclear power, we're going to be faced with a tremendous health problem. We are finding out we have no more fossil fuels. The Arabs can turn 180 degrees out of phase and sell the remaining oil to China. You see, China's just opened the doors to Western technology, have they not? 25% of the population of the world wants the same goods and services that you and I desire today. And it's put into tremendous demand on the, re on, the, on the remaining supply of oil that's within the world. If the Arabs would simply turn around and sell it to the Chinese, they could care less whether they sell it to the Western uh, countries or not. They're not very pleased that we had gone into the Mideast areas. So as a result, we're trying now to tap in. And scientists started going to the area of hydrogen fusion. You remember that? <coughs> Nevermore Laboratory says, well, we'll take hydrogen and we'll compress it together under tremendous temperatures of 10 million degrees, under tremendous pressure, and put an electromagnetic bottle. Well, that's the example of the alchemist going over looking at his students and mixing up a concoction. And he goes over and says to him, he says, well, students, what are you doing? He says, well, we're trying to come up with a chemical to dissolve anything. So the alchemist says, well, students, when you find the answer, what are you going to keep it in? Well, Livermore Laboratory, when you find the answers, what are you going to keep it in? Well, I'm going to keep an electromagnetic bottle. I want to tell you what, if that electromagnetic field will oscillate uh, and fluctuate in any way, shape, form, or fashion, you've got a worse problem than Three Mile Island ever dreamed of having. They did demonstrate hydrogen coal room hydrogen infusion in the university. It's called the muon process. A muon was twice the size of an electron, and they would fake the hydrogen atom to accept the muon and eject its natural electron. And once the hydrogen would eject its natural electron, then the muon would decay, decreasing the mass of the atom. And therefore, all that energy that's held in the nucleus has to be released because on the law of physics says everything must reach a stable state. I must stabilize and as a result releases the energy. They had proved this out many times in the university but the technique, the muon technique became a Cadillac process. It would take billions of dollars of trying to produce a, a muon generator. You see the muon decays in a billionth of a second so it became a Cadillac idea. We needed a way to be able to tap in to the atomic yield of hydrogen and do it very safely. So the Lord was dealing with me, and, the, and in the process, the answer was very simple, that as you ignite the hydrogen and oxygen gases, if you will now prevent the hydrogen and oxygen atom to come together to form the water molecule, it cannot stabilize, right? If the water molecule cannot form during thermal gas ignition, then what will happen? Well, thermal explosive energy has to keep continuing to occur until one or two states occur, either that a new atom structure is formed or an implosion effect occurs and mass is converted into pure energy. The equivalent energy yield from one gallon of water is more than 2.5 million barrels of oil per gallon of water.